In the last two videos, you set up Express to correctly serve up your static assets. Now for us, we chose to put all of our static assets in the public directory. Everything inside of there was made available via the web server. This included the CSS, images, JavaScript, and HTML documents that we wanted users in the browser to be able to access. Now, static means that the assets are static. They do not change. I could refresh this page 500 times, and I would always get the exact same result. It is a static web page, not a dynamic web page. Now, there are times where a static web page is exactly what we want, but that's not always the case. In this video, you're going to learn how to use what's called a template engine to render dynamic web pages using Express. Now, the template engine that we're going to set up in this video is called Handlebars. Handlebars is going to allow us to do two very important things. First up, as mentioned, it's going to allow us to render dynamic documents as opposed to static ones. And the other thing it's going to allow us to do is to easily create code that we can reuse across pages. So think about index.html as an example. When I was filling out this page to create a real website, I would likely want to put in a header up top and a footer down below. And the header and the footer are something I'm going to share across all web pages to make the site feel like one cohesive experience. It would be bad if you went from one page to another on the site and the header kept changing styles or formats. That's going to make it really confusing to navigate. Without a template engine, I'd have to write out the header here and then copy and paste it into my other HTML documents. Now, that's obviously not ideal because that means I would need to go to all of those documents if I wanted to make any changes. It would be nice to be able to have the header markup in one place and be able to reuse it across all of the pages in my site. With a template engine, we can do just that. So once again, with handlebars, we'll be able to render dynamic content and we'll be able to easily use and reuse little pieces of markup throughout the various pages in our app. Let's go ahead and kick things off by setting up the tool in our project. To get everything up and running, there are two NPM modules I want to take a quick moment to show you. The first we can find by Googling NPM handlebars. This is the handlebars package. And if we crack this open, we can see it is a very popular templating tool with about 4 million weekly downloads. Now, this is a low level library that implements handlebars in JavaScript. It can be used in a wide variety of settings like the browser, the server, desktop applications with Electron or anywhere else that JavaScript can be used. Now, for our purposes, we want to use handlebars with our Express server. The handlebars module isn't going to let us get that done. There is another handlebars library, though, which you can think of kind of like a plugin for Express, which essentially integrates handlebars into Express. We can find that by Googling NPM HBS. HBS, which is short for handlebars, is the library that we're going to install and set up. Now, HBS uses handlebars behind the scenes. HBS just makes it really easy to integrate with Express. Let's go ahead and take a moment to install this and integrate it into our application. Down below, I'm going to shut down NodeMon and we're going to use npm install. Right here, npm i, the module HBS at the latest version, that is 4.0.1. Now, when we go ahead and install that, it's going to get all of the code set up in node modules as always, and it'll add the dependencies to package.json and package lock.json. Now, once we have it installed, the process of getting set up is actually really easy. All we need to do is tell Express which templating engine we installed, and we do that by using a new method on app. That is app.set. Now, set allows you to set a value for a given Express setting, and there are a few. We have a key, the setting name, and we have a value, the value we want to set for the setting. In our case, to set up a view engine like Express, the value is view space engine, and it is important that this matches up exactly with the spacing and capitalization taken into account. If you don't set it exactly, Express isn't going to know what you're trying to do. And the value we use is the name of the module we installed, in this case, HBS. And there we go. 
That single line is all we need to get handlebars set up. Now we can actually use it to create some dynamic templates. Now, when we're working with Express, it expects all of your views, in this case, our handlebars templates, to live in a specific folder. That is in the root of the project. It's supposed to live in a folder called views. So for us, the root of the project is the web server folder, and we're going to create a new views directory right inside of there. In here, we can put our handlebars views, and that's exactly what I'm going to end up doing. What we're going to do is create a view that replaces the home page. So instead of the home page being a static document served up from public, it's going to be a handlebars template. Right here, let's create that file. We have index.html for the HTML document. I'll call this view index dot, and the extension we use here is HBS, which is the handlebars extension. Now you'll notice right away that Visual Studio Code displayed the handlebars logo, this handlebar mustache, and that is because Visual Studio Code has built in support for handlebars. That means that you're gonna get all of the nice features you'd expect when writing code like syntax highlighting, auto completion, and more. Now a handlebars file is nothing more than HTML with a couple of nice to have little features for injecting dynamic values. That means we can actually start with just a regular old HTML document to see how all of this works. What I'm gonna do is take index.html exactly as it currently exists. I'm gonna copy the entire file and I'm going to paste it over in index.hbs. So instead of the home page being served up as a static file, we are going to render it using handlebars and express serving this document up to the user. Now currently, the end result would be the exact same thing we had before, because we're not taking advantage of any of the handlebars features, but we'll explore those in just a second. For the moment, let's just go ahead and set up a different title so we can actually see this page rendered in the browser. What I'm going to do is just render weather, and if we see weather, we know things are working, and that's the goal so far. Now, since we are gonna transition the index file from being an HTML document to a handlebars file, I can actually remove it from the public folder. Now, this is not to say that you shouldn't serve up static assets or that you shouldn't serve up static HTML documents. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm showing you is different ways to get the job done. If you need to serve up a static document, you can continue to put them in public. That's gonna work just great. If you need something a little more complex with dynamic content, then handlebars is probably your best bet. So right here, I'm going to delete index.html since we have index.hbs in place. Now it's important to note that so far, no one is gonna be able to access this page from our web server. To actually serve up this template, we need to set up a route. So once again, that'll be an app.getCall. We're gonna show this one on the home page, so I'll leave that first string empty. Then as the second argument, we'll have our function with request and response as the two arguments which we've used before. Now inside of here, the only way we've ever sent information back to the requester is via response.send. We saw how we could send back a regular old string or an HTML string or even an object or an array which would get converted to JSON. In this case, the goal is to not use send, but to use render. Render allows us to render one of our views. We've configured Express to use the view engine HBS, so with render, we can render one of our handlebars templates. Right here, all we need to do is provide as the first argument the name of the particular view we wanna use. Right here, inside of quotes, that is index. There is no need for the file extension. This just needs to match up with the name of the template you created in that views folder. Since they match up, we are good to go, and we can actually test things out before taking it to the next level and actually rendering dynamic content. Down below from the terminal, I'm gonna use the up arrow key to cycle through my previous commands, getting back to nodemon, where I run source forward slash app.js, I'm gonna run that command and now we're gonna visit localhost 3000 and we're gonna visit the root of the site to see our template rendered. Over here, localhost 3000, I'm gonna go from forward slash about to just the root and what do I get? I get weather showing up as expected. 
So by calling response.render, Express goes off and it gets that view. It then converts it into HTML and to make sure that HTML gets back to the requester. And in this case, we've proved that happens by viewing it over in the browser. Now, at this point, we have a static document. There is nothing dynamic about it, even though we're using handlebars. Let's go ahead and fix that by actually passing a value in. What we're going to do is go ahead and provide a value for this title. So instead of hard coding it in the file, it's going to be provided by Node.js. Now, to provide a value that's accessible in the template, we have to provide a second argument to render. So the first argument is the name of the view to render, and the second argument is an object which contains all of the values you want that view to be able to access. So as an example, I could provide title, and I could set that to a string like weather, and I'm going to go ahead and change that up just so we can see a difference between the two. I'll say weather app, and I could provide another value as well, like name, and I could set that equal to Andrew Mead as an example. Now that we're injecting both of these values into the template, the template can actually take advantage of them, and that's what's going to create the dynamic HTML document. So right here, we can use either title or name in handlebars. The question is, how do we get that done? Well, we use a little bit of the handlebars syntax. If we want to inject a value in an HBS file, we open and close two curly braces. That looks a little bit like this. So I open two up, then I close both. Right inside, I reference the thing I'm trying to access. So I could access title, which is available, or I could choose to access name, which is also available. Now, if I save index.hbs, we should be able to access our title since we've passed it in and we are indeed referencing it. Now, if we go ahead and refresh the page, what do we see? We see weather app showing up. That means the value which Node provided to the template is indeed being used. I could switch that up even further. I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to its original value, weather. And if I were to refresh the page here, once again, we're seeing weather. Now, we also have access to that other value we provided to the template. This was name, and I could also choose to use that. So right here, I'm going to create a P element for paragraph, and I will just put some text inside of here, like created by, then I'm going to inject the name. So I open two curly braces, I close those two curly braces off, and I reference the value inside name. Now, if we refresh the page, I should see both of my values showing up in the template, and that is exactly what I get right here. I have the title weather, and I have the name shown as part of the paragraph down below. Now, with this in place, we know how to use a handlebars template to render some dynamic values that end up getting provided by Node.js. Let's work through this process one more time for the about page, then as your challenge, you'll do it for the help page. So what I'm going to do is create a new template in the views directory called about.hbs. And in here, we're going to have contents pretty similar to about.html. So I'll take the contents of the HTML file, I'll paste them into the HBS file, allowing me to make them dynamic, then I'll delete the static file since we're no longer going to need that. So I'll remove about.html from the public directory, though it's still going to be important that other assets like the image and the CSS sheet are served up from the public folder, otherwise this page won't be able to access them. So we have about.hbs, but it's never going to show up because it's not being used in our express application. Over here we can fix that. app.get, setting up forward slash about. We're also going to set up our function. And as we've done before, we'll be using response.render to render a template. The name is about. Remember, we leave off the file extension, and this indeed is enough to get us started. If I save the file, I could head over to forward slash about. And what do I get? I get the exact same file I had before. Now we could choose to make some content dynamic like we did with index.hbs. In here, I have create by instead of created by. So let me go ahead and fix that typo. And then what I'm going to do is take both of those and bring them over to about.hbs. So for the moment, even though we're rendering dynamic content, which is a good start, 
We're not reusing it and that's okay. We're going to address that in the next video. So over here, I'm going to expect that title gets provided. So I will open up two curly braces title and then close those off. And then down below the image, I can provide that same text, a little paragraph saying created by followed by the name provided. Perfect. Now this matches up pretty closely with what we had over here. The only thing we need to do is actually provide values for both. So over in app.js, we're going to pass in an object as the second argument to render. We just used title and name in the template. So I have to provide both of those title and name. Now for title, I'm going to use about me just so I can see the difference between the two. And for name, I'll use my name, Andrew Mead. Perfect. Now that we have this in place, we can make sure all of our files are saved. I can refresh the page and what do I get? I get about me printing, which is my dynamic value. And in my footer text, I get Andrew Mead showing up, which is coming from right here. Now it's time for you to convert the help page on your own. And this one isn't going to get title or name provided. We're gonna switch things up and make the challenge a bit more interesting. So right here, goal, create a template for the help page. Step one, you're going to set up a help template to render a message to the screen. So you wanna create a new template in the views folder. You can start by copying the old file over to that new template. And what you're gonna do is expect that you get a help message provided and you're going to show that entire message in a paragraph. So you'll have to set up a new paragraph and you'll have to use the message inside of it. Now, step two, once you have the template set up, you wanna set up the route to render it and you wanna pass in an example message. I use title and name for these two values. For your example message, you can use whatever you liked. Just make sure to use the same as the value you pass in and make sure it's the same in the template itself. Now, once you have everything set up in terms of the route and the render call, you wanna visit the page and make sure you actually see the help page with your help message showing up. Take some time to knock that out, test your work. When you're done, come back and click play. How'd that go? I'm gonna kick things off by creating that view. So right here in the views folder, help.hbs. Now, as I mentioned, we could start this file off from the help.html file. So I'm going to take the contents here. I'm gonna bring them over to help.hbs then I can go ahead and save the template file and remove the old HTML document, which I'll do. Now that we have things in place, the goal was to get a message showing up and I wanted you to put that in a new paragraph. I'll put that just below the H1, though you could have put it above as I didn't specify. Next up, we're going to pass a value in. I could choose a name for this, whatever I like. I'm going to use help text as my name. If you used something different, once again, that is okay. Now with the template complete, we can set up the route that's actually gonna render it. To do that, another call to app.get. This time forward slash help is the page we're working with. We're going to set up the request and the response arguments in our callback. And all we need to do is use response.render. I'm going to provide to it the two arguments it needs. First, the name of the new template, we called that help.hbs, so I'll pass help in here. And the second is our object with all of the data required by the template. In this case, help text is the only thing needed. Now for this text, you could have used whatever you liked. I will just use this is some helpful text as my example. Now that wraps up step two. The last thing to do is to test our work. I'm gonna make sure that all of my files are saved and I'm going to go over to localhost 3000 and visit the new route, which we set up as forward slash help. When I do that, what do I get? I get this is some helpful text printing, which is fantastic. If you're seeing that, it means you're all done with the challenge and you're all done with this video. In this one, we learned how to use handlebars to allow us to render dynamic content. We're able to set up templates, which are very similar to HTML documents, though we can inject specific values inside, whether it's help text, title, name, or whatever else your application needs. Now, this is just the beginning of exploring handlebars. In the next video, you're gonna learn how to create reusable handlebars partials, 
which can be used for things like footers, headers, and sidebars, which would appear on more than just a single page. I'm excited to get to that, so let's go ahead and jump right in to the next video.